Welcome to part 3 of the Muppet Monster Adventure Let's Play. In this part we'll be doing Poker Faces. Now I don't know if this is a uh, reference to... Well, I guess with the guillotine and someone's head being chopped off they would pull a pretty good poker face thereafter. Um, either that or it's to do with hot pokers being hit at people's faces because we're in the castle dungeons. So yeah, pretty uh... well I guess it's a pretty dark name depending on how you interpret it. And then again this is uh, Muff Monster Adventure which is by the way a Halloween game if uh, that wasn't obvious enough already. But a pretty good one. As uh, yeah, I keep saying, I, I know I keep saying that this game is, is decent, but it, I just feel like it's uh, pretty overlooked. Considering the uh, uh, the company that works on it, uh, Magenta Softwares, I don't really know what else they've done, and I don't think they uh, exist uh, now. You only need two more pieces of the Kermanster amulet. But uh, as you might have been able to tell, this is the first level with reused music, which is the title screen music. Because uh, uh, this game does reuse music a, a few times as well. Um, so I guess it even copies Spyro in that way. Uh, some of the some of the music um, is used more than like twice in some cases. But the only tracks that are ever used are the title screen and the music from the f uh, well first two levels, I guess. Since this one's already been reused, at least I think so. Oh, and the hub world. The hub world gets reused too. Um, as you might have seen there, I hit a switch and it lifted some stairs. There is actually a glitch I discovered with uh, there's a glitch I discovered with with um, with that switch. I think it's I think it's to do with the checkpointing. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but if you hit a checkpoint, I, I think it's this, I've never really actually tested it to properly tell, but if you hit a checkpoint and you die and go back and then try and hit the switch, the stairs won't lift and you have to exit the level and hit the switch again. And that's what I found out when I actually tried to speedrun the game, is I couldn't get everything done. Uh, kill myself, head back, and and then um, go up the stairs and get the, the remaining stuff there, because it's actually a faster route doing that that way. And I can't quite remember, but I think if I kill myself too... Um, the stairs become un, like lifted, so that didn't work either. Uh, but yeah, we just got another hit point. Um, you can only have up to, well, five in a hidden one at a time. And since they're limited and don't reappear, it's probably a good idea to avoid them if you're on, on max hit points, if you see any more. But yeah, speaking of the music, the music actually is very is very good in this game. I very much like it. It's um, it's composed by uh, Michael uh, Giancio, Giancino, Giancino, if that's um, how it's pronounced. Uh, and he's the guy who um, does some films. He did uh, Ratatouille for, I guess, you, you Disney fans out there who. No stuff. Uh, this challenge is a lot of fun. You have to just shoot the things as they come down, like the targets. 
I can't remember if I'm actually mashing the button really quickly or if I was using a turbo controller and I turboed the uh, the square button. But um, yeah, the music in this game is is actually very good. The only like it's very well composed because you know it's by like a film composer. Um, but the tracks are a bit short, and sometimes the levels uh, can be pretty long. So you'll be hearing, uh, you'll be hearing like the song f end and and then start again because they're, they're they're not looping songs; they're like songs with a natural start and finish. Uh, Although now that I've actually like tried um, like having a go at composing myself and stuff with uh, uh, with like the Spyro sound font, uh, you actually do f notice there are some samples uh, that were used in this game that were also used in Spyro. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of like voice samples or like noises that uh, are used in a later level uh, that were also used in like Bentley's Outpost in Spyro 3. Um, the hub music uses the jaw harp, at least it sounds like a jaw harp and a lot of people remember hearing it and saying oh what is that instrument and I think it's a jaw harp from, from what I could tell based on like hearing other instruments and stuff, which uh, I, I've tried playing a jaw harp once before, it was pretty fun. <laughs> hurts, hurts my teeth. Um, I can't really do it properly. But there are some people who are very good at it. Uh, Yeah, I have I have trouble with the jaw harp because I'm slightly cross jaw, so I can't actually bite down on the on the harp properly <laughs> and play it. And apparently, if you don't play it right or if you play it too much, it can actually cause a lot of damage to your teeth. So I kind of don't want to do it as much. So there's an interesting challenge. It's push the blocks into the right spots, but you actually have to use your spin and your rib. Uh, Glove ability to move the blocks so they're facing the right way. Um, another thing I just neglected to mention also was uh, uh, we just saw Beaker earlier, and his gimmick is if you hit him, he flies off and he hits into something and opens up uh, like a new area or something. He's essentially like the fireworks from. Uh, Spyro. Only he's more for doors than like chests. Uh, but yeah, this is a good way to uh, learn how to use the Kerr Monster ability, which is just like pushing and pulling objects, and like he even goes heave ho, which is I guess a kind of a reference to like Kermit's hi ho. Although why the. Uh, Castle Dungeon has these like um, giant like stone images of uh, the Muppet characters. I'm not sure. See, good work, Robin. You earn this Muppet token again. Well, yeah, that's a uh, another token under my belt. Uh, we've got 12 now, which is a enough to uh, go to the boss. So yeah, the, the game does require you not only to like have a high amount of uh, evil energy and tokens to beat the game, but just to even get to the next boss, you, you have to at least get... Um, what would the percentage be? It'd be like... 75% of the of the tokens in that world uh, given that you've got all the ones from the previous so like 
Oh no, it's not even 75%, is it? It's more. Uh, yeah, it's, it, there's 15 tokens in this uh, world, not 16. But yeah, you have to get a lot. Um, so like you can't even, you can't skip a level at all. You have to be, you have to go in every level. Uh, which presented a problem for me when I was younger because I actually had a very scratched uh, copy of the game, and uh, one level I only ever got to play it once because it just never load. It would always get stuck in the loading screen if I tried to enter it. And another level, I uh, just it would just never uh, open ever, and I only got to play it for the first time in like 2012 when I um, bought a second copy of the game. Uh, because I was able to play so, I even though. Because I couldn't go to those levels, I couldn't get further on in the game. There is a cheat code for getting uh, access to every level. So at least I was able to try those other ones. But there were still some levels that were uh, pretty much a mystery to me because I'd like, never played them. Like, I have a, a fairly good memory of of like where things are in this game but for like those two levels um i can't i, I can't because i just did, never really played them so like if you ever like if you ever did look at that uh speed run of mine you'll notice that in those levels i probably go a bit more slowly and i have less idea of what i'm doing uh although speaking of speed runs um Something I said I'd mention is, uh, you may have noticed that when I kill enemies, or when I break, especially when I'm breaking any of the, like chests or crates, uh, I jump as I break them. That's because there's this um, there's this thing in the game which I don't know if I'm the one who discovered it, but I seem to be the one who was first to show it off in my uh, let's play. Well, not let's play my speed run. Um, and like attention was called to it, like people said, like, oh, uh, I'm surprised no one else thought of that. And this might be why, be, um, why I was seen as such a good like speedrunner in in like the community, because um, this this strategy it seems small, but it ends up saving a lot of seconds over time. Uh, when you break a crate, the Oh, like when you break any of these like chests, the uh, the muppet, like the evil energy, flies out, and it's supposed to land in like an arc around the, uh, just like around the area of where the the chest was. But when you break a chest, if you jump as you do, uh, you can y usually grab them all before they fly out anywhere. And so it means you don't have to like walk around in a in an awkward arc to um, to grab them all. You just grab them all together. And then there's an interesting thing too that the the game does, which is uh, pretty nice. So in Spyro, when you pick up a gem, uh, a number appears for uh, what kind of gem it was. So, you know, a red one, a number appears and it says one. But if you pick up, like, multiple red gems, you get loads of ones appearing. In this game, they actually tally it, and the number that ap appears uh, becomes whatever the, the tally is. So, like, there's no, there's no 25 in this, but, like, green is one, red's two, uh, blue is 5 and yellow is 10. So if you were to pick up a blue and a green it would say uh, 5 for blue and then it would become a 6 if you were if you were able to pick up the uh, the green just before the like number fades away.
As you saw, I uh, actually had to run all the way back to the beginning of the level because it's just faster doing it that way. Um, grab those last couple of um, Muppet tokens. And we're almost at the end now. We've just got our first um, instance of a of a like a door that requires two switches. Which thankfully doesn't happen as much in um, in this game as it appears. Because every single time one of those happens, Pepe has to stop us and say, Oh, you, you need another switch. In case, uh, in case you think your game is broken. But yeah, I seem to be uh, playing it pretty safe here. Um, the the number of evil energy in levels is isn't like a isn't always a nice number. It's not like um, 100, 200, 300. It actually goes up. Uh, a bit more every every level. So we start at 300, then it becomes 300 and like 20, and now it's 350. Uh, but yeah, that's the first world nearly done. We just got the boss next. So thank you for watching, and see you in that part.